Hey guys, so in this video, I'm going to be showing you how to finish up and improve your final result by editing it in a third party program like Blender and then bringing it back in and reprojecting the textures onto it. So I've got an environmental 3D model here, entirely made using photogrammetry. I took around 400 photos to get this kind of result. As you can see, it's not really perfect. A lot of areas that are clearly a fence like this have a little bit too much geometry and nothing on the other side because it's more planar. This entire area should be a cube, but it's missing a lot of geometry. And the entirety of the roof is missing, and we could probably get a lot of it back. Not to mention, there are visible holes in the windows right here. Let's go ahead and export this model with all of its textures, and just wait for this to finish. For this tutorial, I'm going to be using Blender. Okay, so once you've got your model into Blender, we're able to manipulate this. If you hit 3 on your number pad, we can rotate this by hitting R. Hit G to move it around, and if you hit 7, hit the top down view, hit R again to rotate it. Let's just get it as aligned to the grid as possible, like this. This is fine. So if you hit Shift A, you can create a variety of shapes. I'm going to use a cube. Hit 7, then G to push it in place. I'm going to make a fence over here. If you hit Tab, you go to Edit Mode. Let's click the Faces option, and just right click at the edges here. If I can uh, get that, there we go, and. Let's just bring it out to match that of a fence that's in this area. So it looks something like that. And as for the height, and I'm hitting control or the middle button on my mouse to rotate the camera around like this. I'm holding shift and hitting the middle mouse button to pan. Uh, so this is about aligned. It's not necessarily aligned beneath. So let's go ahead and fix that real quick. It doesn't really matter. It's more hidden geometry. So another thing we can do is fix this house here. So creating another cube, let's move it into position. And we want this to be the, roughly the size of the house first. It's a very simple process to create a basic house shape in Blender. So I'd say the house goes up to about there. I know it goes about here-ish after the fence. Let's go ahead and resize this up to where the fence, where the roofing begins kind of bring this in a bit. We want some detail about the door and for the windows. If you hit Control R and move towards the center here, we can just click and then click and now it's in the center. Grab the edge view, click that and just bring it up to where it can intersect with the geometry we do have of the roof. And that roughly created what the house actually looks like in real life. Now let's also create a plane for the ground because we can see there's some holes in the ground. Let's just press S and bring it bring it out to scale it. If you hit tab, we can move it out, make it a bit more accurate. There's no holes over here, so that's just fine to have it like that. We can adjust this. And lastly, the shed over here also needs to have this basic shape that we gave the house. So again, shift A, select the cube option, hit G, move it into place, tab, and bring it out. Make sure you're in face selected first, and now bring it out and match the dimensions that you think the shed has and then match the height. Now hit Control R, hit the center, divide it along the length, double click, bring this little edge here up to where it matches the roof that we do have. Now let's go ahead and bring this in a little bit so we can see the windows. That detail has been captured decently well. Now for demonstration purposes, this works pretty well. Now what we wanna do is first combine all of these objects. What we can do is hide the original photogrammetry mesh, right click on any of these, hit Shift, right click on another one, Hit con Control and J to fuse them. Now do the same thing with all of it. Control J. And lastly, Control J. Now you can hit the eyeball icon to bring the photogrammetry model back. Now this part's very important. You want to right click your models first and then right click the photogrammetry model and then hit Control J. This is or in order to maintain the origin point, which you don't want to mess with if you want things to line up properly when you import it into Photoscan later. So hit N, and now bring all this back down to zero. So zero location, 90 degrees for the uh, X axis, and zero for the Y and the Z. And that's roughly what you would get out of Photoscan. So let's go ahead and export this, and then import it into Photoscan. So just hit File, Import, Model, and you don't have to change anything here, just hit OK. So once your model is imported, let's go ahead and build some textures for this. So workflow, textures, make sure two is selected or one if you prefer lower quality. 
the higher you, this goes, the more textures you're going to have for the model and generally more um, quality for the textures. So just hit OK and wait for this to be finished. So once your texture is finished building, you can see that more textures have been added to the new geometry. And that's primarily what I wanted to demonstrate in this video. Now, we also greatly overestimated the size of the roof. You can see that it roughly should have ended around here. So if you actually bring this back in your modeling program and export the textures, you can actually match it up pretty accurately. We also added a uh, some more geometry for the roofing over here. And we nearly got this one accurate. It's just a little bit too tall, which means we should just bring this back into Blender and modify it a little bit more. Reprojecting textures can also be useful if you just want to smooth out the model in general and fill in the holes and then reproject the textures onto that. So the one thing I want you to keep in mind when you're doing this is always make sure you don't mess around with the origin. Make sure in Blender at the very least you combine your new objects with the photogrammetry model in that order. And then you rotate your model to all zeros in the location and the x-axis has to be 90 degrees. The y and z have to be zero. So if you have any questions about rejecting textures onto your models to improve them please post in the comment section below i'll do my best to answer them make sure you leave a like and subscribe for more videos just like this